Good morning. Good morning, a rainy uh, Friday morning, February 2nd, 2024, to Peace Through the Word, a daily devotional ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church, uh, uh, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod Congregation. <clears throat> I'm Pastor Ron York of that congregation, so welcome, so good to be able to welcome you this morning, even though it's raining here in uh, Cochise County of Southern Arizona. And, but it's still good to be able to welcome you, no matter where you're chiming in worldwide. So on this Friday morning, my brothers and sisters, we're going to be looking at the subject from Dr. Martin Luther on the purification of Mary and the presentation of our Lord when she brought Jesus into the temple to present Jesus. And then uh, Sarah Young is going to share with us where Jesus says, I, I am renewing your mind. So both of these subjects, I pray, will be a tremendous blessing to us as we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So in the morning, O Lord, you hear our voices, and in the morning we prepare a sacrifice for you when we watch. Our mouths are filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. So, O Lord, open our lips and our mouths will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So Dr. Martin Luther talks about this on the uh, purification of Mary and the presentation of our Lord, and he's using the passage of Scripture of St. Luke chapter 2, verse 34, where we have this recording. It says, The child is appointed for the fall and the rising of many in Israel. Let's see how that applies to us this morning on February 2nd, 2024. Christ came to be a light and savior of all the world. And Simeon said, and everyone justified and saved through faith in him. For that to happen, all other righteousness which is sought in ourselves with works apart from Christ must be rejected. And that means any works where somebody says, well, you've got to do something for salvation to be born again. You know, that goes against decision theology, where you make a decision. That's law, and the law never saves. So, as Simeon said, that he said that uh, Jesus, to be the Savior of the world, is, uh, also means that everyone is justified and saved through faith in him. But for that to happen, all other righteousness, which is sought in ourselves with works apart from Christ, must be rejected. You know, we can't, we, we can't say, well, we, we embrace that, that belief. But there's a large body of believers that believe that. All right. So the works righteous depend on their works. They stumble against faith. You see, if you were saved by a decision you make, how do you know if that decision is sincere enough? And you don't know that. So you're hedging your bet. You're hoping that it is. But you won't know that till Judgment Day. But let me rest, put it to rest. Your decision could never be sincere enough. Why? Because you're a sinner. And therefore your decision is impregnated with your sinfulness. So it's never sincere enough. So it's, it, it's a waste of time. It, it, it's meaningless. It carries no meaning. So you're in trouble if you're relying on that. You're not saved. You're not a Christian. And that's a lot of people that embrace that, that, that belief. You've got to invite Jesus into your heart and life. Nonsense. The Bible never teaches that. Never. Not even close for that teaching. Yet we've got, and I'm going to tell it, we, you got Baptists that believe that. you got... Uh, evangelicals, evangelical free churches, assemblies of God. You know, you've got a whole boatload in that Reformed camp that believe that. And I know what I'm talking about. I was in that camp for 25 years. No longer there. <laughs> it's not true, guys. It's not true. It's not taught in the Bible. And it's got to be rejected because it's, it's, it's a work that you think you, ha you can do, but you can't. Ephesians 2 verse 1 says you were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked. What can a dead person do? Nothing. The problem is people don't see themselves as being spiritually dead, especially in the United States. 
really bad. So as, as Martin Luther says, they stumble against faith. They fall on Christ so that they burn, condemn, and persecute all who reject their works or consider them useless. See, when I say that, people get mad, you know. <laughs> so as now the falling and breaking is nothing other than unbelief and sinking into works. So the rising and being built upon this rock is nothing other than believing and withdrawing from works. These are the believers, the ones who um, withdraw from works. Christ has been appointed for the rising of them and no one else. And as at Christ's time, many in Israel rose in him. So it will be until the end of the world for nobody can rise through his works or through the doctrines of men but only through Christ, by faith. This is brought about by faith and has often been said without any works or merit. The works must first follow after the rising. Very true. This is critical, brothers and sisters. This is critical for your salvation. Critical. All right? It's not just a good suggestion. <laughs> okay, it's very, very critical. And then Sarah Young is going to share with us what Jesus says, I'm renewing your mind. When your thoughts flow freely, they tend to move toward problems. Your focus gets snagged on a given problem, circling round and round in, 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 in attempts to gain mastery. Your energy is drained away from other matters through this negative focus. Worst of all, you lose sight of me. A renewed mind is presence-focused. Train your mind to seek me in every moment, every situation. Sometimes you can find me in your surroundings. A, a, a lilting bird song, a loved one's smile, golden sunlight. At other times you must draw inward to find me. I am always present in your spirit. Seek my face, speak to me, and I will light up your mind. Good words for us this morning. Pray that will bless you tremendously. So, my brothers and sisters, we profess the Christian faith and we use the words of the Apostles' Creed, so together we profess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and he sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray the prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer. So together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin and our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept, it, uh, kept us this night from all harm and danger. And we pray that you would keep us this day also from sin and every evil, that all of our doings in life may please you. For into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls, and all things. Let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. My brothers and sisters, again, thank you so much for chiming in this morning, this rainy uh, Friday morning, uh, February the 2nd, 2024, to peace through the word. I pray it has blessed you and given you genuine real peace as well. 
So uh, I convey all of our Lord's blessings to you in abundance and wish you all tremendous blue skies. <laughs>